Well, let's have a go at this YouTube thing, eh? So, we've got a dead uh, rotary encoder. No output whatsoever from it. It's a very, very high quality Borns one, though. Uh, very nice. The other ones that I have work beautifully. So, unfortunately, this one uh, on the A and B outputs, that one and that one, no output whatsoever. So, okay, let's tear it apart and see what's in it. And we'll see if we can do this without slicing my finger open, which would be a bonus. So I've already done that once this evening on a pepper grinder. Oh yes, that looks as though it's going to come out quite nice and easily. There we go. One pin out. Two. Yeah, these ones are going to be slightly more awkward to get out. Uh, where's my knife gone? This is the bit where I slice my fingers open, because Stanley knife, lovely. Or just break the knife blade. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully we can do this without destroying, yeah, there we go. Knife blade broken, so that's not going to work. Hopefully it's not left any shards in there for me to slice my fingers open on. Hmm. Is that one a play? Doesn't want to play. Um, let's see if we can get in there with a pair of pliers. Oh yeah, cheap wire cutters. Very cheap. Very, very cheap. Very heavily abused, but only because they're very, very cheap. So we keep the Lindstroms and so on for good things. Whereas these can be used and abused and generally destroyed because they're only a couple of pounds each. It's ridiculously difficult to get into. Let's see what we can do with this. Are we going to be able to get into this? Can we get into this anyway once we've taken it apart? Yeah, that does separate. Okay. So. Yes! There we go. That's one. And the last one, which is typically and traditionally the one where I slice my fingers open. <laughs> well, not in this case. Okay, we're doing well so far. We've got oh, just that one from the pepper grinder. A little bit of blood. There we go. Hey. Now, I thought that these were optical encoders, quadrature encoders. Um, the reason I bought these was because they were cheap. And the, the idea was that I was going to build them into a VFO based around one of the, well, either one of the AD uh, DDS chips or uh, the SI5351. So, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is build myself a universal controller for them. As always, I've tested these with um, 
an Arduino first, just because somebody out there has already written the code for them. Um, so quicken it, there we go, that's coming out now. Quick and dirty, there we are. So four push-in pop rivet things. So quick and dirty way to test most things. Highly recommend the Arduino for these things. Um, because somebody out there has probably already written the code for your chip. You can use the demo version of it to get an idea of how they work. And test out your hardware. Right. So we're out there. We have a very, very cute hole in there. What well, that's about. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. There we go. That's maximum zoom, and I have no idea what's in there. I can't see what's inside it. Nope, okay. So we'll do that. Let's have a look and see. Oh, wow. They are beautiful. Look at that. Well, they are definitely optical encoders with an index as well. I think the single wheel is used for with index and without um, because these definitely don't have an index pulse unless the unused pin is an index pulse which it could well be I guess yeah the unused pin the marked unused pin on there is definitely definitely looks to be an index would you look at that so on the back of this thing we have ground, un unmarked or unused, A, positive voltage, B, so standard quadrature encoder, and it's going to be ground, unmarked, so second one in on this side, second one on on this side, and uh, no, it's not bonded, okay, we'll just see, will it focus, yes it will, no, not bonded, so the output pin is not used on these, However, that's really cute. I like that an awful lot. Hmm. Okay. Let's see if this sticks. Um, there may be more. I've got a VFD that I need to do a um, an exploration on because somebody was very kind and sent it to me. There we go. Oops. Just get this neck out. There we are. At that that's quality that's really really very nice do you like that yep so it would appear that what this does um, apart from that encoder wheel which is a very standard quadrature encoder wheel but it would appear that the marker is the same uh, sorry, <coughs> the index mark is present all the time, regardless, but it looks like there's some kind of optics down there, some kind of optical system in there, so it looks like what happens is this little, um, this little chip here on there is, that's going to be, where are we, let's work this one out here. Hmm. Yep. So looking at that, it is A. That one I think is going to be B. Can you focus on that? Yeah, ground. So this is ground. All the way around there. That's unused, which would be the index pin on a different model of encoder. Um, that one is channel A. That one's channel A. That one's positive voltage. And that one is channel B. So there's going to be an infrared source on there. 
there is going to be um, a detector on there, so yeah, I think infrared source or light source, detector, detector, channel A, channel B, cute, very nice, I like that. And as always, well, <laughs> as always, says he for the first published public video, if you like what you see, if you want to see any more, leave a comment for me and we'll go from there. We'll see what else we can work on.